Hey, welcome back to Let's Talk. Uh, I'm Joe Pardo, and I uh, I'm here on Blab again. I think it's it was about two weeks ago since the last one. Uh, this week we're uh, let's see what we had. We have Mater in in the chat. He uh, he dropped out. Doc Kenny was having trouble getting in, but he's in. And we are joined underneath me by the awesome Ryan Gray. Who's it? I know, right? Like, how how <laughs> cool is this right here? So, uh, <laughs> I'm I Joe Pardo. <laughs> I'm Joe Pardo as always. And oh, actually, it looks like uh, was that Brent Basham or Adam uh, or a- Andrew uh, Curry just maybe joined in the chat room here. So uh, I'm Joe Pardo. As always, it's superjoepardo.com. Actually, the big news today for me is uh, tickets for uh, MapCon, Middle Ang Podcast Conference, just went on sale, uh, which is it's been it's been awesome. Uh, we had like a little private sale, but now they're officially on sale for everybody, and it's like 50% off the door price, which is freaking awesome. So uh, you can check that out at midatlanticpodcast.com. And and everything I do is also sponsored from the yourdreamplatform.com, which teaches you all this online business and all that stuff. So uh, let's get off Doc Kennedy to my right. I don't know. Does, I wonder if it, is it the same for everybody? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So like Doc Kennedy to my right. right. Introduce yeah. yourself, sir. Well, I think it's to your left, isn't it? Or, well, it's, I see you to my right, right. but maybe <laughs> my left i don't know i don't know it's it's okay i'm here over there (laughs) yes i'm here get out of my room damn (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm uh doc kennedy i'm host of the filmmakers focus podcast which just recently went weekly and uh super stoked to be here thank you joe nice to meet you ryan you here nice meeting you doc and ryan if you could introduce yourself I am the Dr. Ryan Gray. Uh, I host the Whoa. pre-med years and the old pre-meds podcast and have several more coming up. But my niche is helping pre-med students get into medical school. Cool. And, and, and more than just helping, but you're like killing it in your, in your space. Uh, I'm hopefully not killing it. I'm hopefully saving lives. <laughs> Resuscitating uh, the best you can. Yes. Yeah. And we need an in-house band here. Um, <laughs> And and uh, Brent, you're welcome to join in if you're uh, if you're able to. I know it's it's still kind of early uh, with the kids and all. I don't know if they're up. Probably. I mean, it's only six ten. I mean, it's well, it's not light outside anymore. But you know, you're welcome to jump in any time. Um, so Ryan, so you I, you just posted the other day. Was it yesterday or t- was it today? I'm this losing morning. Track. This it was this morning. Okay, so you just posted this morning about how uh, you leveraged your your podcast and platform uh, to make a minimum amount of income from one sponsor every single month. And then you, you, you didn't crush it. You resuscitated it and brought it to life. uh, You know, Frankenstein, Frankenstein style to be more than just, okay, we have a podcast with, with a commercial on it. Mm -hmm. So if you could enlighten us with, uh, with your story that you shared earlier today. Well, first and foremost, uh, I, I went after a sponsor um, that I um, I trusted, right? I, I went and I built a relationship with them. I've had them on the podcast and talked to them. I understand their knowledge in the field. Uh, and I've talked to people that have used their product and have said great things about it. So... I, I wasn't just going after somebody who would send me money. I was going after somebody who would provide value for my listeners. So once that happened, um, I, I slowly built a relationship with this company first by having them on the podcast and talking to them and increasing exposure for them. Along with that came uh, an affiliate relationship where I would send people to them and they would give me a commission. Uh, I initially wasn't looking for official sponsors of the podcast. I I wanted to kind of keep it sponsor free with a few mentions here and there. Uh, But when I did go looking for sponsors, I I had a number in mind and that was $250. I did some math over the last like nine months when I approached this company 
and I was only making like $140 a month and the, the, it's a test prep company. And so there, there are some cyclical stuff during the year of when people are buying and when they're not buying and when they're looking to, to use them. Um, but I, I thought it was actually pretty low, but there were some months that were 400 and, and, and whatever. Uh, and so I approached them and they were like, yeah, we'd, we'd love to be an official sponsor, uh, and tie up that relationship even more. Uh, they approached me actually with the concern and I, and I had it already, but they, they voiced it first. It said, look, we're, we're concerned that you may actually lose money on this deal. Uh, because cool. at, at $250 a month there, there's going to be some months where you you may make more than that. And so, um, they, they proposed it. And again, I, I had it in my mind, but just hadn't gotten to the chance. And they said, let's, let's do a, a, we'll give you the maximum, uh, either $250 per episode per month or the commissions for that month. And so since we've kicked that into gear, uh, I've increased, uh, my, um, marketing of them and exposure to them, uh, through social media. Uh, I obviously do one email uh, with my podcast episodes that they sponsor and actually mention them, mention them officially as a sponsor. And my, my commission checks have just gone up and up and up and up. Now, I, my question to you is, is do you feel that the, that there's a clout that comes with being a sponsor that, that maybe, you know, the difference between mentioning a company and, you know, actually having them like, this is our official sponsor you know, it makes a, makes a difference in that sense. I, I don't know. I don't know only, if it's maybe only the listener knows. Well, that that's, yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't know if it's like, maybe it's, if it's, it's partially repetition, like every week you're seeing it. So it's like, Oh, they must be like a legit company other than that time that you had that one company or, you know, some representative from that one company mm -hmm. on that one show, one episode, and it might get downloaded a lot of times, especially with your show, because your show uh, is for those pre-med students. So it's, it isn't, isn't your show, if I'm understanding it correctly, um, meant to be consumed from as a, in its entirety for, for pre-med students? Basically, yeah. I suck them in and I keep them in. It's like a black hole. <laughs> well, you're doing that with money, too. So let's, let's keep that going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so I, I, you know, so the idea is, is that people would be listening to those back episodes cause it's, it's knowledge that they need, not yep. like, and in, you know, energy it's evergreen wise or yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that would probably have a lot to do with it. Had, um, have you gotten with your, with your newsletter, have you gotten a good click through rate for the sponsor? Uh, you would assume I would look, but it's just not something that I've had time to to track and look at and A B test and do all those cool <laughs> things that everybody says you need to do. I just it's it's just me doing everything, so I, I do what I can do and I, I don't do no more. High five, man. High five, man. <laughs> you, just, you, know, just, you just gotta yeah, there we go. Um no, I, I, I think that that's awesome. Doc, do you have anything to add or any questions for us, oh. Ryan? I think that's great. I, I I just think if they're not asking for it. I put in the work. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I got a, uh, I reached out to them for a testimonial actually after talking to somebody else, um, because I said, Hey, if I'm going to go after some more sponsors, um, you, you guys obviously are paying me money, good money. Um, so I'm assuming you like me and we have, a, we have, we do have a great relationship. We're actually in talks to start a, a, a podcast together too, a little co-branded podcast, but um, uh, I reached out for a testimonial so that I can have a testimonial as I reach for, out for more sponsors. And they wrote back basically saying that they've seen a 10, uh, a tenfold increase, uh, over their wow. investment, uh, for sponsorship. So, cool. wow. No, yeah. that, that's phenomenal. Now, how, uh, here's a question. How does that sponsor fit in with your, with your pre-med show? So that that's, I mean, I think the biggest part, right, is finding sponsors that fit your audience, what, what your audience wants. Yep. Um, and so they, my, my pre-med audience, to get into medical school, you have to take the MCAT. Um, and so the MCAT is the medical college admissions test. It's the, it's the biggest hurdle to get into medical school. Uh, and so there are test prep companies out there that help you prepare for that test. And this is a, one of the test prep companies. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So that, that makes perfect sense. It's a, and that's one of the things like that I talk a lot about when it comes to sponsorship is, you know, it's a lot easier to get a sponsor if you're super niche down. And in your case, you, didn't you actually start a second show, Ryan? I did recently. Yeah. It's even, it's even more niched down than my pre-med show. It's called the old pre-meds podcast. And it's, I, I kind of stumbled into this one. Uh, again, I, 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 it's a relationship thing. I had a relationship with the guy that ran the old pre-meds website. Uh, I've sp spoke at his conference and uh, he decided that he no longer wanted the website anymore. And he basically gave it to me. Um, and so I started a podcast for that, a very different uh, format of a podcast, very short form question and answer podcast. Um, but yeah, it's just a, another way. It's it, I got the idea. Um, I actually started the podcast with him before he decided to give it to me. Um, I got the idea after podcast movement and listening to NPR and WNYC talking about the success of cross promoting shows. And I said, I, I need, I need more shows. <laughs> <laughs> Building that network uh, definitely can help. And, and especially in, in the way that you're doing it with, you know, creating a funnel of shows and hopefully creating a funnel for those sponsors to just like, boom, 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 right on down the line. Yep. So, uh, well, Brent uh, Basham, has just joined us from Digital Dads. Hey, what's up, guys? Over there. What's up? Can hear me? Oh, so I got him on. I got him down down this way. Uh, <laughs> but I guess he's to your left. They need to like figure this out so that it's always the same, so we can do like a Brady Bunch thing. I was like, about to say Brady Bunch or the Star Wars Brady Bunch thing they did. <laughs> hey, hey, Joe. Yeah. Joe, I got to bow out early today. I'm sorry, bro. Oh man, oh, that's all right, I man. Off, I appreciate dog, you coming bad. in. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, that's great stuff you got going on, Ryan. I'm I'm excited to see where that goes with you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we'll catch up, Doc. Uh, I'll probably in like two weeks probably be doing another one. I would think. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, just uh, plug your stuff real quick before you jump out. Cool. Uh, you can uh, check out DocKennedy.com. Find the the podcast there, and uh, at DocKennedy37 or Filmmakers Focus on Twitter. What's awesome. your what's your show, Doc? I missed that part. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, it's a show dedicated to filmmaking. Oh, All awesome! Filmmaking. My yeah. co-host would be super interested. He loves film, so. Oh, cool! Yeah, really send cool. him my way. That'd be great. Definitely. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you, Doc. See you later, man. So, so Brent, what's what's been going on with you, man? It's been a while since I've had a chance to <laughs> talk with you. Man, we're uh, we're really we. But I guess a little over a year into it, um, and we just um, kind of decided we're going to do a roundtable, um, kind of refocusing in on the community a lot. And uh, we started, you know, as you know, you're going to be uh, potentially be a guest on a roundtable episode and really kind of retooling and tweaking the whole community of, of dads who kind of love Star Wars and care about raising their kids the right way. So. <laughs> It's a cool thing, man. We, I think the best thing I've ever had, uh, experience I've ever had with this is just being able to meet new people. We'll get an email here and there from dads, they're regular people that found us, and it's awesome. I mean, it's just the most amazing thing to connect with people you don't know from somewhere, and I'm still a fan of the medium. You know, I guess I'm a host, but I'm a fan at heart. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, Ryan, are you a dad? I am. I have a 22-month-old good daughter. Oh, that's awesome, man! Yeah, yeah we, we just had out digital dads. We just had our recent episode we did uh, with PediaCast, um, Doctor Mike over there. Uh, you're mm -hmm. probably familiar with his show, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of new dads. We attract new dads, right? I'm not sure why that is, but we get a lot of guys looking for when we were lucky enough to be on the parenting category right now. So I think that might be why. Yeah, but um, high yeah, up we, on the parent parenting. Uh, is that, is that Mike here. Seville, the parenting cast? I think that's his last name. I, he goes by Dr. Mike. All his materials say Dr. Mike. I'm pretty sure it is Seville, though. Um, great guy. And he's been doing it for, I think, since 2009. Um, yeah. But right up your alley a bit. With, are you a pediatrician or what's your specialty? Uh, I no longer practice, actually. This is my full-time gig now. Oh, okay. uh, but I was a flight oh, surgeon in the Air Force. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. The military realm, too. Okay. Yeah. This is not my full-time gig. So you guys are you got me kind of part-time, but... <laughs> I love doing it, man. I'm just kind of here to, Joe invited me to, to have my voice in here. So I, I don't know how much I can contribute at this point, but we're just along for the ride. We have a great time. Well, that's you know, awesome. it's, it, you know, it, but that's, that's what it is. I mean, we all start because we, we have a love for it, right? Cause there's so much work. This isn't like a free check. Um, there's very little free about what we do. Um, there's, you can do it on the cheap for sure, but you know, it, 
there, there's very little free here. It's so not, it's not passive. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not. It's definitely Bummer. not. Passive. No, <laughs> I give up. Sort of, you know, write your book. That's that. That's passive. I got yeah. I got one of those going. Oh, that's awesome, Brent. Have you have you considered writing a book? Yeah, we're actually um, we're we're really like I said, we're retooling. We're we're basically coming up with a roundtable concept, and we've we've come up with ten tenants, and it's uh, basically a fatherhood manifesto. It's we are uh, we are intentional. We have we have fun. Um, you know, we respect the roundtable, and it's just the ten things we kind of believe is the core, the central ideas of being a parent in the digital age, and we're going to take that turn that into probably an ebook and give that away. I think we really need a lead magnet. We haven't done that yet. Um, and weirdly enough, we've got some subscribers nonetheless, even though we always tell people sign up for our newsletter, you get nothing and they still sign up. I don't know why. Um, Cause they love you but guys. Yeah, we'd like to, I mean, it's obvious. Maybe, maybe we, 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 we like to have fun. We have uh, Andrew says we have the uh, spoonful of medicine um, recipe. I said, you know, that's supposed to be, spoonful of sugar he's like well no we really have 90 percent sugar and maybe a spoonful of medicine you might get a little something out of the show outside of the entertainment value but um that's what we love bringing on guests i mean we get to what's cool about it to me is we get to go out if i find something cool if i send somebody cool i try to get them on the show i just try to get bj novak on the show i think that's not going to happen but <laughs> but because he wrote that he wrote that book you guys not, might not know um he's on the office you know and he's a writer and he's a great dude but he wrote a book called the book with no pictures. And it's just, you know, all about, uh, there's no pictures in it and they make the parents say funny things. And it's like the kids have, to, I have to say boo boo, butt, and the kids laugh. Um, it's really cool because anything out there that's in the realm of being a dad, I can go approach somebody and get a, a opportunity to, talk to them whereas if i was just some guy off the street i'd never have that chance so and to be able to share that with other dads and to be able to bring other dads on the show like we did the star wars episode we're bringing you on for work-life balance in fact a two-part because so many dads said yeah <laughs> and that's awesome man i mean we get to have guys like us have a conversation and other dads just resonated with them so hopefully we'll continue to do that and keep it real and have fun with it well the, the guess, as long as it stays well fun. yeah i mean the guest thing is important because it gives you an opportunity to um you know have topics to come up with i mean even just this show this show in general that we're all doing at this very moment you know it, it'd be really boring if it was just me that's why the show that i do about online business is about two minutes <laughs> per episode right, <laughs> you know so it's like it's yeah. really short because I, you know there's only so much so many ways to say the same thing but but to have other people that are doing it how having other people that are working on it being able to answer questions i mean sometimes the questions get a little repetitive but you know, it's it's all there for people to to take part in and enjoy. So, um, I you know, I'm looking forward to to doing the roundtable. I've been on your show before, and uh, it was a great mm -hmm. time. And mm -hmm. you've been on my show as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, Ryan, I would love mm -hmm. to have you on my uh, on Dreamers podcast uh, at some time in the near future, because you are doing this full time, and obviously, you you could be a doctor right now, and you don't you don't need to. Cause you're making all the, the hundreds of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm making hundreds of dollars. Yeah, yeah, Def definitely replacing that physician income. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think they call that big baller. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not too hip on the terms these days. Yeah. But, but we, you know, one of the things that I love too with ours is uh, the ability to bring in our kids. You know, and Joe, you've heard it before. And we do clips with the we do clips of me with the kids. And you know, it's not like it's there's an intrinsic, uh, you know, implicit sort of approach to parenting that we try to you know, hey, have fun be involved with your kids and so some of the stuff we do isn't explicit it's more kind of get it from just paying attention and seeing what we're doing and maybe be inspired to kind of interact with your kids more because there's a huge distraction problem in the world right now I mean just and and I think you know some parents are out there trying to actively find things to make it better and some parents are just kind of you know it's hard for them to look up from the phone and pay attention to their kids and as they get to that age I mean what, what's this generation of kids going to look like without the degree of parenting involvement particularly from dads you know um so I don't know. I don't know where it goes. We're, we're already seeing the downfall of society from the lack of parenting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you that's know, not, the that's not true, the though. Too, right? <laughs> that's not true. You know what? Did you guys ever see those pictures of like the train, you know, from yeah, like the 1940s? I, I, I Everybody's got this yes. going on. It's, you know? it's a different medium. Mm -hmm. Same thing, different medium. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So, I, you know, everything runs in, in, in cycles, but, you know, part of that is also the the world population has gone up as well so like the percentage of things has, has shifted so it's like everything seems to be just happening more but 
to a certain extent, it's like, well, what's the percentage of what it was ha- of happening before versus now? You know, it's not it's well not and that it, much it, different. Yeah, and you know, we're acclimating to it. We're adjusting to it. This is this is the first time. The whole reason why Andrew and I got the idea to talk about this, create this show, was that we're living in a time, the only time in history where we are digital natives or immigrants raising digital natives, and we don't know what we're doing. You know, so it's sort of happened and it's happening quickly. It's all kind of got thrust in our faces. And so all of a sudden it's like, whoa, this is really a problem. My kid being on the phone, the device uh, all the time, watching videos all the time. This could be a problem. Like, how's this? But those conversations are starting to happen. People are starting to say, pull back and say, well, how do we do this? And they're happening online. So the connectivity, you know, it's like I, I have the opinion that technology is agnostic, right? it's not good or bad it's just a matter of how we use it so sounds like the force. we want to use these embrace technology yeah exactly right so which side of the force we're big star wars nerds ryan in case you didn't uh, didn't know that but um so yeah so it's a matter of how you use it and i think that that's one of the things we don't propose to have the answers we just propose to try to introduce the conversations and get people talking and thinking about it and if we do that and you have fun along the way then by all means i mean and how cool is it that all of us have our own the ability to just sit here here in our own house with our own little phone or whatever device and like record and broadcast around the world. I mean, that's technology right there. I mean, that's amazing that, you know, when I was a kid, I thought about being David Letterman, but <laughs> you had to be, there was some ropes you had, some channels yeah. you had to go through to get to that place. And here we are, granted the audience is a bit smaller, but I'm talking to people and they're listening. So look, that's cool. Look, Ma. You know? I'm <laughs> and on with, TV. Yeah. with the podcast app on Apple TV. Headphones on. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you're, you're on the big screen now that that podcast app is on the Apple TV. I'm so. on the TV. Well, that you know, and that's the thing. Like back in the day, that would be something to be said for it, and now it's just like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're on the TV. That's mm-hmm. great. Like, I, I, you know, I could I airplay straight to my TV, and and now I'm on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Now for us, I think it's a matter of you know branding yourself in a way that, and then Ryan's got a tremendous niche, and Joe, you have your niche, and being able to cut through the clutter because everybody has something. You know, and, and I mean, how many personal coaches are out there now? And it's like, what are you a personal coach of besides being a personal coach? Like, I don't know where the credentials are or where, you know, and it's not to knock anybody. I know that they're all trying to do right, but there's just a lot of people out there chasing it without, I think, having to put in the dues and foundation, which one of the reasons why I always connected with you real well, Joe, is, you know, you, you understand that. And, you know, it's, um, it's a hard, it's a hard, you, you don't get, I think people get enamored with making some money. They might listen to a Pat Flynn episode and think they're going to all of a sudden make some money. And he, and, and he does a great job. I love listening to his show, but you don't get how much work is involved, right? You can't do it just for the money because you won't that's, last. That's, that's how I started. I started because I'm like, Oh yeah, I could have a website called medical school HQ.net, just like security guard training, HQ, right, right, whatever it's called. Right. And I'll make tons of money with uh, AdSense. And that's and, my niche. Four years later now, uh, here I am. But Jeez, four gentlemen, years spe- later. So, speaking of being a father, I need to go relieve the nanny. Oh, enjoy it. How old, Ryan? 22 old? months. And girl. little boy or little girl? Oh, awesome. Oh, man, you're going to be so wrapped. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, thank, nice. thank you so much for joining in, man. Uh, I really no appreciate yeah. it. And I'll, uh, I'll shoot you a message on Facebook to get you on my show uh, for Dreamers in the, in the very near future because we're having our first baby, as you probably have seen. So After, uh, after that awesome yeah. little video you made, yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was, it was a lot of fun. I hope to be able to make lots more. Uh, in the near future <laughs> i don't want to know about that lots more babies or no videos videos, videos. <laughs> okay All right. brian if uh, you can your stuff real quick uh medical school hq.net if you happen to know somebody that wants to go to medical school send them my way actually i i oh, right. know somebody so ahead, I, I will send them your way I was going to say, I don't know what the, what's required or what the uh, situation is, but I know uh, Dr. Michael Pediacast, he does something where they offer uh, credits um, for CMEs. Man, I'm not versed. Yeah, CME yeah. credits. And uh, I don't know if that's something that you've uh, explored or, through podcasts. Yeah. He's a separate podcast. Yeah, not, okay. Uh, okay. not my realm. My, my people don't need that yet. Okay. Ah, yeah. okay. Thanks. All right, Ryan, thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon, man. All right, bye. Bye. So Brent, what like what else has been up, man? It's it's been it's been a little while since uh, since I've seen you and really got to talk to you. Yeah, we've just been you know working full time, obviously, and the three kids that takes a bit of effort and time, uh, as you will soon yeah. know, uh, even with one. Um, outside of that, oh, really just, just building the crap. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, when you hit the nights and stuff, in fact, um, one of our brand new listeners, we got, you know, we were lucky enough to show up in uh, the homepage of iTunes mm-hmm. right now. Um, if you scroll down under kids and family, that was a really big deal for us. Oh, you know? yeah, I mean, and, and it should be. Totally spiked everything, you know, and, but it's, so uh, of course, when you see that spike in traffic, it's like, well, what can I do to really serve this audience? And who is this audience? That's kind of what I've been thinking a lot about, you know? Um, so it's, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, Andrew and I, like I said, we're really retooling and trying to focus on the community a lot. I think we'll make it um, as much, as much of a group kind of podcast as uh, brand as it can be mm-hmm. um, thinking of making some games, Kickstarter, like a, like a card game, something like that. Just some, how, how can we better serve these audience? Because like, for example, the game is a mat is kind of an offshoot of my kids are on their devices all the time. How can I connect with them? We play a lot of board games. I kind of got into that, you know, and we're digital dads, but I, that didn't, to me, being digital dads means being smart about how you use technology. It doesn't mean you always just use technology. And sometimes some analog things are pretty important for face-to-face relationships, mm-hmm. you know, especially with your children. So we're just kind of diving into a full force and trying to see where we can take it. You know, I mean, obviously it's resonated with a few people. Um, we'll get email, got an email from a guy today, you know, uh, he started listening to the show 24 hours, listening to the 15 episodes. That's so dude. And they're over an hour long. Yeah, I, so I, I know they are. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's like, Whoa. I mean, really, you really did. I mean, like, and usually it takes them a few episodes to even get into our stuff anyway, but, um, like I said, man, I just am having a blast with it. It's a lot of work, as you know, um, but I love doing it. If I if I didn't love doing it, I would quit doing it. So, I mean, just like coming on here with you tonight, I was like, well, kids are down hanging out and, you know, um, just come on here and talk about it because it's a blast. It is. And, um, yeah, it, it, it is obviously a lot of work. Um, let me know about your, your Kickstarter because I plan on kickstarting a game sometime in, in the coming months um yeah really? it's a party card game so uh looking okay. looking forward to it i already have like the mechanics and everything down i just need to um really buckle down because right now I've, all, I've been so like enamored with the mostly the conference and building out the rest of the school mm-hmm. like building the videos for the your dream uh that it's 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 been really tough and then trying to stay on top with like all the other stuff going on with the baby and and, and classes that we've gone oh, yeah. to and you know, still trying to have a life in between, in between. I mean, sitting at my desk for 10 hours, 12 hours a day is yeah, <laughs> tough. Excuse me, to say the least. Yeah. <coughs> well, well, when we kick it off, man, I'll definitely let you know. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. I just um, inhaled when I should. Yeah, I swallowed when I was just trying to inhale. <clears throat> um, <coughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let, let me know because you know. I, I want to I wanna help you guys make research. that happen. Um, and you can do, you know, you can do like the printing on Alibaba is like legit. You can do, you can find places or, uh, for example, exploding kittens, um, which I, you probably yeah. familiar with exploding kittens, but yeah. So like $8 million Kickstarter and, um, right on the back of the box is who they use to print and make their, uh, game. So that's kind of wow. cool. Um, yeah. And so what I mean is, you know, if you, if, and, and the intriguing thing about that stuff is, can you make something fun? You know, again, technology, we live in a world where you can, yeah, awesome. my no card. Awesome. So this is how I'm gonna make the the, nice. the first version of the game. That's great. So. That's great. No, I mean if you want um, some play testers and stuff like that, I will. You know, I, will. Um, I I will definitely you know. take you up on that because I don't have like kids or family like here that could yeah play. Well, do, and you know if you have if it's like uh, if you end up with like a PDF version, I'll pitch it to the people in our and our listeners and group and stuff and say, hey, you know. Print it out, test it out. Let's get some feedback going because we're they're going to be doing the same thing yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, well, so, yeah. Hopefully. We could definitely uh, work that, make that work, man. Because like I, I, my, my, the my game plan is actually uh, it, there's going to be like a base deck, but then there's going to be lots of mm-hmm. like expansion decks, like a lot, like twenty. Gotcha. I think it's like twenty two or twenty four expansion decks. So, uh, okay. so there's definitely a lot of room to once I get someone in. They're going to want to buy as mm-hmm. many of these expansion decks. You know, the idea is to get them to buy the expansion decks because it's easier to sell to existing mm-hmm. customers than to new customers. Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. The way the game is, is built, it's like, hey, it's, and it all works together. So I, I think it's, I think, and I think it's going to be a lot, of, a lot, a lot of fun. You can play with like at least three people. I mean, realistically, you can play mm-hmm. with one, but, or two, but you really need at least three people mm-hmm. to make it work. To have yeah, fun, to, yeah. To, 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 yeah, I mean, 
Cody and I played uh, some of those kinds of games, like Smash Up and some of these mm-hmm. other kinds of games that are somewhat similar. I mean, I don't know exactly your idea, but they have multiple decks. You know, you can buy expansion packs. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. It was really a lot of fun. So, I mean, you know, you're not talking about, you know, going and reinventing the wheel with in terms of printing some cards. You get a good idea with some nice artwork. And you know, there's value there definitely. for somebody. So and, and it's another, you know, it's another product to add to my my foray of of already built, you know, products that I've built, which you know is it's right and to bring this all back around to online business, like that's the that's the whole thing is like you need the the four pieces, right? Like you need the platform, you need to be good with people to to a certain extent, uh you need products and then you need to be able to market them. Um, my, my, out of four, I have three of the four, my, my four, the fourth right. one I don't have is the, uh, the marketing aspect of it, but I actually was just recommended a book called gorilla marketing, uh, that says like four and a half stars with this crap ton of reviews on, on Amazon. So it's actually on its way. I'll be here mm-hmm. Thursday and I plan on getting my crash course in marketing so I can finally put that, you know, Joe's not that great at the whole marketing thing to rest. It's uh, well, you know, I think part of it is, you know, to the extent you can, because obviously it's got to fit someone's audience. But, you know, like, for example, if you make a card game that resonate, you know, involves kids or parents mm-hmm. or something, then you, you know, you tell us about it. We'll talk to you about it, either have you on the show or, you know, at least pitch it, whatever, promote it in groups. And so leverage the network because you built in a, a network, you know. And so I think that's right. one of the key things of like having people who like you, like, for example, who like mm-hmm. us, for example, if, if some of the dads, if we put out a card game and it ends up not being that great, okay, well, but they still like us, they're still going to follow us, so they'll give us a try on our next product, and sooner or later, hopefully, we'll get decent at making some kind of product that works for them, you know, um, but it takes, it's tough, man, it's tough, we're jumping into this without <laughs> experience, so. Well, you know, you're trying to make you know, uh, products that go, you know, for your, for your niche, and my problem is my, I don't really have that specific of a niche so for me it's like okay yeah. well you're, you know joe joe is the niche right it's how many people can joe bring mm-hmm. in and then okay joe has books mm-hmm. the books can be sold at you know joe does talks so joe sells you know the books at the talks joe use leverages his network of people to get more talks then people are like hey joe how do i learn how to do everything you've done well, Joe built a school for you to learn how to do all that. Mm-hmm. And then when you're going to, you mm-hmm. know, you're, you're enrolled in the school, guess what? There's also a podcasting conference you can come out to, you know, to good old Philadelphia and come to that. And then when you're there, you know, there's uh, there's the opportunity for more networking. Like everything, everything I'm doing, it's like building a big engine, right? And that's really, um, mm-hmm. I, I don't necessarily recommend doing it the way that I've done it. I, I would the way I would recommend doing it is finding your niche. And then finding products, you know, that you can build for that niche. Like in your case, it would be games for digital dads, but they're not digital games. They're, Mm -hmm. they're analog games to take people back into the human, humanality, the dad part, right? Right. The dad part is the important part, digital and dad, you know, you don't have to hammer on the digital part so much, but you know, so you get that niche and then you build those products for it. So for me, it's like everything I do is like building like a giant and they, everyone throws the word funnel around, but you're building that funnel, funnel yeah. of like, hey, I have all these products, and hopefully, the you know people like what I do enough that they get further and further down into that funnel of the things where they're like signing up for my school, where it's like, hey, this nine dollars a month, they're donating to my Patreon, they're buying both. You know, I have two books. I'm actually working on my third book. Uh, it's mm. slower than than the first two for sure, but they. they hire me for uh their company you know they have they work for a company and they're like hey we need a motivational speaker to come out okay perfect i did did the business part i got the motivational part (laughs) everything comes together but you you know building those products is really important i and i applaud you for taking something that where you don't make money and turning that into Mm -hmm. like okay well how can we make a product that people actually want we have a Mm -hmm. network to sell it to we have not just a network to sell to, but a network to play test it, a network to make it better through, you know, that's the important thing. Well, part of, part of this, yeah, and I mean, part of this, honestly, Joe, has come, it started to spring out of, we're finally getting to the point where, when you, you, you're you in the group, and there's an, a community that will actually have a voice, you know, and before, at the beginning, you start out, and there's a lot of crickets, and, you know, you're trying, and, you know, everybody's trying, everybody's busy, so, you know, you're respectful, and you get it, but at the same time, it's like, well, man, if I could get people engaged, 
with this, then we could really figure out how to serve them better, what we could do better. And I mean, we, we've had some sponsors. They've just come to us here and there sporadically, um, not breaking the bank. You know what I mean? They came to me, said how much. I looked at what they said, John Lee Dumas said we should charge. And I said, I'm not doing it for that. It's just not worth it to me. So I gave them a number and they said, yeah. Uh, so they did some episodes. And we, get, well, we got to talk about books, children's books, mm-hmm. you know. And then uh, another sponsor came and the same thing. said, how much? And we said, okay, try it out. But I didn't go after that. And I wouldn't necessarily – like what we realized really quickly – without getting like a huge audience sponsorship's not going to do it that's not the way to take this and make it into a business well not you, know? it can I mean, be. you can make it can some be, money but not through the way john lee dumas talks about on his website not through the thousand impressions what are you talking about so so the the numbers oh, yeah game, you can't play yeah. that the numbers game isn't going to work unless you're like npr with like millions or yeah. hundreds of thousands of downloads that can work right but, you but need you're to not going to be there i mean you know, you have that group. You right. have the Facebook group. You have a mailing list that you you're saying you don't even give anything away for free, and right. people are signing up for it. That's that's phenomenal. Yeah. So you know, you have to leverage well, we, that and your website and you know ads mm-hmm. and Twitter and Facebook and the Facebook mm-hmm. group. Like you leverage all that, and all of a sudden you can bring in you know fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars for maybe six months of promotions. Now you do it by episode, and all of a sudden now it's like okay, here's mm-hmm. a twenty four episode pack. Here's Here's a 12 episode pack. Uh, and then you leverage whether or not your, your commercials are in the beginning, middle or end. You can actually get six right. packages out of that between 12 and 24 with all different price ranges for those people. And they'll pick the one that they, you know, really feel comfortable with. And, and honestly, with the, with yeah, I mean, being that's... on the front of iTunes, you should be like hammering the hell out of that, you know, to get people. Well, we, you know, again, our, well, yeah, probably, but honestly we are in, you know, we're not in money making mode, honestly, Joe. Right, right now, truly, we're in let's grow the community mode. And I think that our biggest focus being in iTunes, we're getting a lot of people that are coming to the show that are new, mm-hmm. right? Because of course, right? Because you're on the front, and you, so you never they never heard you before, and so we've got a lot of people told us that oh, I've listened to like you know it took me a while, but I really like the show after I listened to a few episodes. Well probably we don't get that opportunity with most people. So that's why tonight, in fact, we're recording the manifesto. That's going to be the episode. We're going to point to this episode. So if you listen to future episodes, go listen to this episode. Here's those T te- here's what we are as digital dads. Here's what we believe. Here's these tenants in a fun way with the, you know, our nice round table and all that stuff. Cause we're nerds and that's what we are. Um, so, so but in that fun way. And so when you come on our show now and you're on iTunes and you click on it and you go, okay, well, let me go listen to this. And then they get a sense of who we are. Now they go back and listen to other episodes in context. Right. Because if they go and listen to the episode I did about <laughs> redheads having superhero powers, it's going to be ridiculous to them. And they might be entertained, but they don't get it because it's not framed. It's, it's just a one off episode, you know. So the idea here is to try to capture them, drive them from the episode to the website, give them the freebie to get to give them some value and get them to give their email address. And now we've got a way to communicate with them going forward to tell them about what we're doing with the show. Tell them about, you know, if we do a game or if we do some children's books, which I've got some aspiration to do, or, you know, Andrew, you know, web developer, we can do that kind of stuff for apps too. So, but we need them in our ecosystem. And what I think happens a lot right now, in fact, I know it does is they, they connect with us. And then even if they might like it, they're gone. So, I have no way to communicate with them. And so they always talk about that email list, but unless they sign up on the Facebook group or something, we lose communication and how many of them might actually be able to connect with us and not just us add value to them. They can add value to us. I mean, in the group, we've got people that add value to each other all the time. Well, okay. So, uh, all right. So, so slow down, slow down. Cause there's, there's actually a really great way to do that. If you can get people to at least go to your website, even if they don't sign for your email list, utilizing facebook Mm -hmm. ads with retargeting you can actually get it so that when they go to your website you can serve them an ad a day later to basically be like hey join our facebook group or hey join our mailing (coughs) list something you know something like that oh so you're saying on facebook the ad shows up? yeah but only the people that go to you can you i mean you can really get it like really specific to make like an ad specific like hey if you clicked on the pedia cast pay or episode you can make a specific mm-hmm. ad just to serve those people one day later, like the, the day after they they went to that they went to that page, they'll get that ad. Um, 
gotcha. which is cool, but it seems maybe a little a little too granular for what you're trying to accomplish, which is just maybe able to go to nah. your you know go to your group go maybe to your, your uh, to sign up your your email list. No, I like it. I like it. I think what we were our see we're we work part time on this, so we have to really focus and and it's hard for me and Andrew because uh, Joe if you heard offline conversations it's well we could do this and we could do that and here's this idea and here's that idea and you know uh you know squirrel and it's just very um we we manufacture ideas we're interested in things what we could do what we could create mm-hmm. that's a double-edged sword because it's great some of those things turn out wonderful for people and I think they get a lot of value of it but at the same time it also we can split our time and energy and we don't have full-time ability to do it and even if we did, we probably couldn't do all the things we want to do. So it's really important for us to focus on a couple of things. And that one key thing for us right now, I think, is trying to and, – and Facebook ad might be a great way to do it. But it's trying to capture more of the people that do connect with us because I think right now it's just a slippery slope. And they just – a lot of them just go. And I think that they would still enjoy being part of the group. I just don't think we've done a good enough job – communicating that to them if they listen to one podcast episode you know so it's it's tricky right because the podcast is one piece of the overall puzzle like with you the podcast is one piece of the overall puzzle so how do you move them without being completely salesy the entire time uh well i mean the ad doesn't so i mean it it's it's tough right because you're what you're what you're trying to accomplish is is getting people so that you're you have like you have their ear um you know, the idea that the whole Facebook ad thing was just so that it's like, hey, because the day later, I mean, you've seen it with Amazon, right? You go and search for something, all of a sudden, hey, I'm getting ads for the thing that I searched. How'd you know I wanted it? Yeah, exactly. Well, they know because Facebook Pixel, yeah. show, you know, enables that. And then I guess they have like some kind of program that like, because now it's getting even more, more tricky. Like they'll have ads with like three items that I looked up before on the same picture mm-hmm. so they must have like some kind uh, of like algorithm that's like oh joe wanted this here's an image with like the three items with pricing boom click yeah i guess i don't know if you can click on one and get all i haven't i should click on one just to see what happens um because i don't know that, that explains they can, like, why split the image oh, yeah. up like that seems like that would be up to whoever's serving the image at that point mm-hmm. but either way it's still a pretty nifty way of, of going about doing it and um and it's a great way for people to like opt in without actually opting in. Yeah. You know, and I like it. I think it's great. Um, do you, uh, do you ask people to join your Facebook group on, on your show? Yeah, we have. Um, but you know, so the way I did it, we, we, we do talk about it. We do say past guests are on there. You know, obviously you're on there. Yeah. Uh, John Harrison's on there. A few people are on there that have been guests on the show. And so that's cool because they hear you guys on the show. You, they know you have your thing, but they get to have some degree of interaction here and there with you, which is fantastic. Right, so there's a lot right. of value out of there. But yeah, we do. And we say, um, what we were saying, I, I kind of messed it up because I told them if they go and sign up for the email newsletter, then they will get access. I will send them an invite, which I do. The thing is with Facebook, it has to be the same email that Facebook has for them to sign in or else you, it won't. The invite doesn't match up, Right. So we have the closed group. So what I just recently did with this whole, you know, round table thing, we just put a link up, we just put a link up um, and you can just find it that way. Because look, if you, if you ask to come in, you're going to get approved to come in and I'm not putting any barrier up for that. What we're doing is saying you come in, if you're coming in there spam and you're going to get removed, you know, it's no big deal. Right. right. I mean, what's the worst is going to happen. You're going to say some stuff and I'm going to say, well, okay, that was, you don't belong and you're gone. <laughs> so not a big deal. Right. So, but because, because then that way I can take down the barrier. And I can just let people come in and not even worry about it. And that way, you know, um, everybody can get in easily. But we are going to, um, yeah, I think we're going to lean heavily on that with this whole roundtable thing. I think this episode we're doing tonight is going to really focus in on going through those tenants. If you identify with these things, which I think most dads that are trying to be a dad will, we've put a lot of thought into these 10 things mm. um, and really proud of them, honestly. So if that Pretty resonates with you. Them. If, yeah, well, I hope you like it. I mean, if that resonates with you and it connects with you, then hopefully you'll take that next step, join the Facebook group and, or, you know, go ahead and sign up for the email newsletter. That's simple. Sounds like so you should stay make in touch and we can for that with that, with that information. Like, you, like um, break it down you know, to like a real, like, blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 boom, 
this is part of our yeah. opening, you know, and it's less than maybe a minute and a half or, or really right. your show is an hour, hour plus. So really, yeah, even, even yeah. if it's two minutes long, it's worth, you know, it's not like your show is like 15 minutes or 20 minutes and you have a two minute opening. I'm trying to squeeze it. Yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying like you could, you could definitely make a two, two and a half minute opening if it includes all these points. And it's like, this is the first time I'm hearing it. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Like this is, hey, I agree with that. I agree with that. I'm not sure about that, but I agree with that and that and that. Okay. Now let's get into it. Um, well, and that's, you know, it's such a, it's such an important thing. Cause I thought about that and I don't know if we're going to, it's such an important thing and it really to go through it and give it, cause there's 10 of them. And I mean, mm-hmm. if you give two, three minutes to each one, it's, you know, to, to, for me to really, cause if I tell you, Joe, we are intentional. I mean, you kind of get that, but if I give you examples and I really hit it home and drive it home, those three points, it really, I think it's going to connect with people. So we're going to try this out. It's all trial and error. Of course, we're going to try this out where, where, so every episode after we're going to say, please stop this episode. If it's your first time and go back and listen to this other episode. And I hope that people will do that. It serves two purposes. One, it gets them to go through that and get everything out of that. We're really putting a lot of time and effort into construct that in a certain way. It's mm-hmm. much more, it's still off the cuff, but it's more rehearsed and really intentional than, you know what I mean? It's that line is very, it's very well thought out. Yeah, yeah. And so that's going to be a good, I don't want to call it a sales pitch, but it's a good way for somebody to get our best face forward when they're trying to make a decision of whether or not to stick with the show. Right. So if they do that and they're actually motivated to do that, and it's like what, 10 seconds for me to say, go check this out. If you don't want to, you just keep listening and you forgot all about it. It doesn't matter. But if right. you do and you go back, then you do that. Plus it keeps the back catalog kind of alive too a little bit because they're driving back and they're kind of checking out some other episodes. And I think that helps with the iTunes algorithm a little bit and stuff like that. So there's a little bit of duality, but I think the main thing is for us to try really hard to get people to give us their ear, give us an hour because right now I really need you to give me five hours or more. And that's too much. It's too much to ask mm-hmm. out of the gate. We get lucky and people do, and they're entertained enough to listen to it again. But I think if you give me that hour and if that episode doesn't hook you, then, okay, good. Maybe it's not a fit for you. And that's okay. But I think if you give me that hour that we're going to do tonight, I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to get enough. And then if you listen to an episode that's kind of ridiculous, you get it. You're like, okay. Number two is we have fun. And that's an important part of being a dad. And so, yeah, in this episode, we're just having fun. So we're not – yeah – because I've kind of thought that maybe we're a little too spread out in terms of what we bring on the show. You know, we talk about technology, we talk about maybe a fun thing, we bring on a guest, but I like the diversity and I hope the guests end up liking the diversity too. The only thing I would, um, I would equate it to is like when you tell someone, Oh man, this TV show is like so amazing. Da, 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 da. And then you're like, okay, well we're going to watch this. Oh, this episode was not, uh, you know, yeah. if you're not into the yeah. show, you don't already know what's going on. Yeah. Like it's not a good episode to start on. Not that you have to start episode right. one necessarily, but, but like a comedy show right. or something where it's like, yeah, that wasn't the best one or it is, but it's not, if you don't already have context for what's going right. on um so yeah so i i think pointing people back to a specific episode is i mean usually people will do that in their episode zero but you've kind of you know well, passed that a little bit yeah and and that's and that's the thing about episode zero is frankly i was dude i had i had been on a mic one time before um where andrew did and i did a test and then we recorded episode zero and it's not that good i wasn't very good i mean it's okay and definitely there's some points there we made that i think were very valid but in terms of personality, in terms of being comfortable in the mic, it just wasn't there. So hmm. the thing is, that's what people go back and listen to. Maybe, you know? maybe you should re- maybe you should think about just um, swapping out your recording zero. Yeah, because episode zero is a lot idea. easier to say than go to episode fifty-five or fifty-six. You know, it's like that's fifty-five for the ten tenants. Yeah, fifty-five. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, me personally, I probably would re-record my episode zero. So you could just swap <laughs> that out. Like, I don't know if you use Blueberry or Lipson or whatever, but you should Lipson. Swap, swap out that file, you know. Yeah, we could. We could. I, I That's what I, my personal opinion would be is go back. Because that's usually where you would go, like, for, like, hey, where's the pilot episode, you know? Mm-hmm. And you just made a new pilot episode. Hell, the, I just realized uh, the other day that Full House did it, too. Oh, did yeah, they? they? They have two pilot episodes. They have one with, uh, with what's-his-face, um, uh, um, Bob Saget, and that was the real one. And there was one that was like basically the same thing, but with some other dude that nobody ever heard of. 
Really? Yeah, because I this I, is I, the, orig- the original show. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Now they they yeah, shot okay. some scenes differently on the second go around, but it was clear like Bob Saget was the person that was supposed to do it. Nice. You know, and the the other guy, I don't even know who, what his name was, but yeah, it, it, it's because I have the whole series, and uh, awesome. I was like, oh, what's this? Up? You know, this is the pilot episode, and we're watching it, and then my wife Melissa and uh, my aunt were like, this seems really familiar, but where's Bob Saget? And then we, then the next step, not we the same. Yeah, you know, we watched the, you know, the next episode was you know pilot like two or whatever, and it was the same exact mm-hmm. episode, same exact premise, but Bob Saget and way better. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, different. man, honestly, at this point, I'm open. We're um, we're just trying to figure it out as we go along. Since we, since like we've been doing since the beginning, and um, I don't know if we're getting it right. I don't know. Well, I mean, you're you know doing I mean? something like, right. You're you know you're in the in front of iTunes. I mean, like I said, I, I have a kid. I have a show on family and kids, and I don't. I'm not up there, you know. So it's not a flu. I don't know. Well, who knows? Who knows what that? Who who knows what that? Who's paying attention? Well, if it's on the front page of iTunes, or... it's it's a handpicked show. Yeah. Now, how no, right is it? I don't, you know, I don't know. Right. You know what I mean, well, and even but even past that, Joe. I mean, in the you know because we we're in the parenting category before that, and then there's people. And in fact, in fact, the Making Dad show. Um, those guys, they're kind of like Jock Radio. I don't know if you ever listened to them or whatever. No. Um. Well, anyway, I saw them on there, and when they come on there, you know, it was like there's not a lot of dad shows. So when they came on there, I tweeted at them, and I kind of like we I was gonna we didn't end up doing it, but because our listeners kind of pushed back on it, but I said we should be podcast like arch they would be our arch nemesis. So we would have an arch nemesis podcast that would basically we would go back and forth against like you know Bizarro to Superman or whatever, right? Green Goblin to Spider Man, and uh, and they were all for it. Like yeah, radio and they were all for it. Yeah, whatever, right? Because, I mean, make it bigger than the individual podcast. But it didn't materialize. But those guys um, are in – they came in there, and they were um, – got, like, play it or whatever. They got picked up. And then um, – so they actually tweeted to me to tell me we were on the front page of iTunes because I had no idea. So so the point is, like – so what I'm saying is, like – but so we were even called from that list. So I don't know who's – who or why. I wish I did know why because then maybe that would be a lesson learned. You know what I mean? But iTunes is such a – black box that how can you take like what we've accomplished or what we're doing with it how do we know what we did that was really working or resonating i don't have any way of knowing like what part of it connects you know what i mean with with the people that are i don't know so i really have no way of helping others or even helping ourselves in the future it's just a guess yeah i mean the only other thing i was thinking was was yeah i mean you keep saying it yourself about how like people listen to the show but they but they seem to need to listen to, you know, three to five episodes, three to five hours worth of your content to really like get that, that bond there. I, and I don't, I don't have all the answers obviously, but I, I would look at like, how can you, you know, make that magic every episode, you know, mm-hmm. like get it. So it's like, Hey, if you only listen to 20 minutes of it, you're going to be drawn to the, to the next 20 minutes and drawn to the next 20 minutes. And, and within an hour's time, one episode's time, you're going to want to do it. It's just like, look, you look at like Disney World, right? You go to Magic Kingdom. It's like, what is it, like a quarter of a mile? Or no, it's actually, it was a three, I think it's like three quarters of a mile from the front of the entrance to Magic Kingdom all the way to the castle. It's like, it's something wow. ridiculous. Yeah, but people don't think about it because <clears throat> it's the weenie, right? You're going towards the, the, the hot dog at the end of the string or the mm-hmm. car at the end of the string. Um, distance from uh front of magic kingdom to but i love the idea of being able to have you know that kind of magic in every 15 minute segment of the show but i think you grossly overestimate my skill and my ability to make people entertained i think that's uh that's probably part of the problem i doubt Um, i see i doubt that and the reason i doubt that is because you're you're doing it in five hours so what you need to do is you need to maybe listen to your own show it with mm -hmm. with fresh ears you know from a fresh perspective and and figure it out and you know and reverse engineer your own stuff to use a, a mm-hmm. digital dad type term <laughs> you know like, well yeah, yeah 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 no you know one thing we can do uh, and i think you probably do with your show is we look at what episodes were the most popular which is super relevant to us um because yeah sometimes well ours it's are a... so topic ours are so topic driven though i mean like so well actually the titles too that's a factor yeah. for sure 
all um, that it all adds up to like yeah. a little two percent here five percent yeah there, whether it's making the difference or not but and i honestly i can't find it off the um how how long of a distance it is to the castle but i know i know for a fact that it's it's a lot well, you're resident people realize you're resident Disney expert. When you told me, I just accepted it as fact. So. Oh no, no, it, it is a it is a long distance, but I can't remember if it's a half yeah. mile or a mile. It's it's something that most people wouldn't walk normally um, yeah. to get to the castle. Well, and that's just pretty much the entrance Bro. to get to the castle. Yeah, that, right. That, you're yeah. still walking. I mean, you're still <laughs> going everywhere. We just went for the first time with the kids uh, here a little while ago, and I mean, in October. Um, yeah, you're you're beat. You are beat. But again, you're having fun. It's kind of like podcasting, right? I mean, if you love doing the topic you're doing, the stuff you're doing, and you're, yeah, you're worn out, but you're worn out in that good way. Like you really busted your hump and you accomplished something, you made something. You, you know that feeling when you release an episode and you put something into the world and you're so proud of it. I mean, that's that's what makes it all worth it, you know. And if you get some feedback on it, all the better. If you're able to turn it into a living, that's, I mean, that's amazing. But you know, I think you have to love it. It, you, you, it does start with loving it or at least loving the process of it. And and you got to love the yeah. niche. You got to love, you know, everything about it has to be something that you really feel because, and, and especially nowadays, because people really want to connect with somebody who, who feels that way about it, right. That has that mm-hmm. why, and it's out there and it's like, they can feel the story of why it's, why it's there. So um, you know, maybe 20 years, 30 years ago, it was like, oh, it didn't, it didn't really matter as much as it does now, you know, pe- why people do things, um, because that's like, that's a marketing thing right there. You know, what's your why? And obviously your why is pretty obvious just in the title in which you, you guys picked a very good title. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious there what, what you're going for. But, yeah, but yeah, we love it. I, well, I'll tell you, I gotta tell you with your, um, I'm a fan. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to be able to make it. Um, but it's, I love your creating the event you're creating. Um, for anybody listening that uh, might be thinking about going, you should definitely go. I went last year and um, I think this year is just going to blow that away even, but what, what, you know, it's uh, not this, the biggest, largest, most, you know, enamored uh, event, but what it is is the best event you can go to, to connect with other podcasters. If that's what you want to do. And I think, if you don't know that's what you want to do and you're new, that is exactly what you want to do because that's how you're going to learn. That's how you're going to be able to get on these type of blob type things. That's how you're going to grow yourself. But you don't go out there trying to grow yourself. You go out there trying to connect with people and make real relationships. And you're going to, when I first started, I mean, I just was trying to get a hold of everybody and scream at the world. And that's the wrong thing. You know, I wish I had <laughs> gone to like something smaller because those are so much more valuable to you in so many ways, even including growing your stuff. I really think so. Oh, you know, on the hindsight of it. Definitely. You know? And I've, so, I've talked with people and I really appreciate the, the comments. I, you know, talking with people about that is like, well, at a smaller event, you have the opportunity to talk to more people and then you get the, you know, get to make better connections rather than spending five minutes or 10 minutes with somebody. You're spending 30 or 40 minutes with, with people and you're, you're growing into groups and you're learning more with that. And uh, this year, I, I really hope you can make it because we're, we're actually um, targeting for about three to 400 people. And we're not, awesome. we're not in the gym this year. So we're, we're actually in a holiday in uh, that can support yeah. the 400 people in the, in the ballroom. So we're yeah, right. I've been paying attention. I've been paying attention. <laughs> We've got my, my wife's got a hip surgery. We've just got some things. I'm not sure yet. We're just trying to work it all out, but she's got to get a hip replacement. Um, oh man. A whole separate thing. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope so, but yeah, that, that, I hope she's able to um, get, go through yeah. with it and, and hopefully insurance will cover most of it. Yeah. We're good on that. It's just, you know, still deductibles. And, you know, like I said, three little mouths hanging around who insist on being fed regularly. I don't, I think it's every other day seems fine to me, but they insist. So I don't know. Child services comes out and we don't need to worry about all that right now. No, but um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, I think, I think that for sure, you know, if I had to pick one, I would love to go. I mean, although Alex Bloomberg is a pretty big draw, but you know, um, 50, 50 though, uh, you gotta, you gotta love 50, 50, like your show or podcast movement. I mean, that's, because of they're different, but the value is still tremendous from your show compared to podcast movement. You know, it's just very different. I mean, and I got to tell you too, one of the coolest things you did, and it seems like it looks like you're going to do it again, and maybe it will become a hallmark for your show, is the is the when you have everybody get into groups and make a podcast in X amount of time. You know, um, that was such a fun exercise. It was great for connecting with people. It was great for creativity and just all the way around. I don't know who came up with that, if it was you or 
you know, um, your lovely wife. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. Dude. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of master, so, master chef and stuff like that, uh, you know, influenced. Yeah. Um, so thank, <laughs> thank you. And yes, I, I plan to, I don't know how we're going to run it with 400 plus people, but we'll, I'll figure, I'll figure it out somehow. Or if we get through we need some volunteers, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get some volunteers. I'll, I'll figure something out. Um, you know, let's, let, I gotta worry about getting that many people there in the first place, but we're already, uh, over 25 people and we had 40 awesome. people at the first one. So we're at 25 people and when's we, the date, uh, September 9th and 10th. So it's not just a okay. one day event. It's, it's, it starts on the ninth at night. We're going to do a, uh, at the hotel. We're going to do a mixer uh, from 7 to 9. And then the next day is from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then after party afterwards in the atrium area where there's a bar and all that. Uh, and then actually on the third day, which I haven't really announced this yet, but I'm actually going to be running a private course here at the house um, for for six people to come and, and learn. I don't know what the topic awesome. is going to be. It depends on what my survey comes back as. But uh, I, I'm – guessing it's going to be probably in the monetization realm uh also the other thing is the um with with the what was it the uh, i forget what i was going to say now <laughs> uh well we don't have alex bloomberg coming yet but uh maybe if we get up well, to yeah, the first point say, of people you, we might in new york yet, so. so you never yeah. know man you never yeah. know we um close by. when you google podcast conference we come up like we're like the second thing that comes up now pages wise. I think we're about six down Google. That's yeah, but, but, dude, that's but a cool three feeling, or man. four of those are all podcast movement. So we're really awesome. like the second thing that comes up. Yeah. Especially not having it in your domain name really, you know, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's- yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it works. And we, we registered, um, I registered podcasts, uh, middle Atlantic podcast, uh, dot com middle Atlantic podcast conference.com map dash con.com right it's right. Still all housed under the podcast middle Atlantic.com. okay cool but so it's it all all of it works it's all it's all good and uh i would love to have uh, i'm hoping that you can make it out i know you know podcast movement is uh you know it's big and i'll be there uh i'll be there i know it's right after fourth of july which is kind of a it's a weird bummer. timing for that yeah. andrew's trying to we're back and forth on that one we've got a number of people out there that we know now. So it's kind of, I mean, it's starting to become a thing where it's the one time a year we can meet with people, you know? So it's more than necessarily just the stuff. It's like actually getting to connect with some people. We've made some relationships with all at one place. So uh, podcast movement has that going for them. I think you can do that locally for sure with the people around your area. I think that can start to become the big de facto thing for the area for sure. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, if I was up there, it'd be like a no doubt for sure. Um, <laughs> but and, I, and I'm still I'm still trying to figure it out. We just we'll see. I've got only X amount of frequent flyer miles right now. So and how much we're going to invest in this old Kickstarter thing, which you actually have to fund to to some degree. But um, right, 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 right. You know, yeah, we'll see. No, it does take, you know, it takes money to make money, man. I I know. I I I, uh, I can appreciate that, but. Uh, but I um I need to wrap up here because I still yeah, got a too. lot of things to do tonight. I'm sure you got kids to, well, not feed, but probably clean up after. Put down, hopefully, man. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, in the way of putting Choke, them to bed is what I mean. Choke yeah. slam. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Oh, oh put okay. Down, okay. Like, yeah, put them to bed. You're going to be there soon, dude. You're yeah. going to be there soon. <laughs> you laugh it up while you got a chance. I will. I will. Uh, we'll commiserate. We'll commiserate later on. Definitely. Brent, if you could, uh, could you, could you, um, Share, uh, share how people can connect with you and all that. Uh, digitaldads.fm, um, all of our Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff's on there. Going to on iTunes uh, under the parenting category or just search Digital Dads. And then me personally, at Brett Bash on Twitter, like Hulk Smash. <laughs> Love so. it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Brent, thank you so much for joining us. And as always, I'm Joe Pardo. Uh, from superjoepardo.com, Dreamers Podcast, all that, yourdreamplatform.com, where you can learn more about this online business stuff, where you're probably watching this stuff right now off of YouTube. And my door's bell is ringing at the moment. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, we can. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, you can cut there. And then, of course, middleantipodcast.com for the conference, September 9th to the 10th. It's going to be a blast. Go sign up. It's 50% off the door price right now. Mike, I'm coming. And uh, we'll, I'll... I'll talk to you all in like two weeks. Have a great night, Joe.
You too, man. Thank you.